thing that I've gotten from the breaking down of George Iloka as it pertains to why they cut him. The biggest reason is always financial if you're looking at the Bengals. Initially on paper, they're going to lose two million this year and a million the year after. But they they gained 5.3 off the back end of his contract um, for a contract at the time that was really, really good. But as we say, saying, the safety market has changed dramatically. So, I want to make it very clear. George Iloka was absolutely let go primarily because of the financial ramifications from releasing him. The second reason would be that Terrell Austin, from his very beginning tenure, the beginning of him coming to Houda Nation, is that he wanted a more rangy safety that can cover more ground and absolutely make more turnovers. He didn't get that from Iloka. We've seen that on tape. Um, uh, even John, John Sharon has let us know. He wasn't absolutely the guy that's going to run up in the hole and invite the contact for the running backs coming through those holes. The one thing that I will point to, though, is that I don't think Jesse Bates is that. But he does give you more of ability to create turnovers. He absolutely fits the scheme better. You will have Sean Williams on some, some probably some hybrid blitzes. You got William Jackson carrying the whole left-hand side of the field. You got these guys making you daring the quarterback to throw on the other side of the field. That's the game plan, right? Okay, I can get with that. But now, as we move forward, what's your plan at safety? You got a special teams maven in Fejulam, and then you also got Brandon Wilson who will be a gunner for this team because he can run a 4-4, four, 4-3, four, four, whatever. With that right there alone, those are your, your, your number one backups. And I feel confident with Fedulin playing three, four games, taking in if base were to go down. But the one thing that I always preach to everybody is competition through depth. If you're taking away quality depth, that doesn't make you as a formidable team when you got to go against some, some Steelers and some different teams like that. And you got to have the next man up has to have the ability to play. He also has to have the work experience to know how to weather the toughest situations. So by limiting yourself in that regard, unless I guess they're going to sign somebody off the street, which I wouldn't be uh, against. I, I mean, Trey Boston, people like that got picked up already. But I wouldn't be against it. But the other portion of this that I want y'all to hear me loud and clear. Zim Hude is never the guy to pull the race card. I am not that guy. I do know I'm black. I get it. The cultural undertone of George Iloka's Twitter, his beliefs on uh, not being 100% a bad thing on kneeling, do play a bad, they, they always play a part in the world that we live in. Currently right now, we have people that are siding with Donald Trump, our president of the United States. One of those people that size with him on a lot of different issues will be Mike Brown. And, and, and let's, not even, let's not even say it's a Trump thing or anything like that. Let's just say Mike Brown. Mike Brown does not believe that you should ever kneel for the flag. And he's very, very vocal about that in the past. To the point where when he came to his last interview, he said, you know what, I'm not even going to touch it. Because he didn't want to say the wrong thing to rope someone like me wrong.